Hi dear students, so we have started the lesson already that is carbon and its compounds. Today let us discuss that same lesson that is part 2. So in the last class I gave one question as a homework right that is draw a electron dot structure of carbon dioxide CO2 chlorine Cl2 ammonia NH3 and sulfur that sulfur consists 8 atoms okay this was the homework let's discuss the question answers and also some of you have done the homework please check it if it is right or wrong and those who didn't do the homework do it now so the first one is what carbon dioxide electron dot structure of carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is formed by the combination of carbon and oxygen that is c plus o gives a CO2 right so carbon has four valence electron and oxygen has two valence electron so here two oxygen atom shares two pairs of a electron from a carbon okay so this is the electron dot structure here dots represents valency of carbon and cross mark represents valency of a oxygen the next one is a sulfur since sulfur has two valence electron, so here each sulfur shades one pair of electron from other sulfur atom. Okay, this is the dot structure of a sulfur. Next one is chlorine. This we already discussed, right? Chlorine shades one electron from a other chlorine atom to become a octet. Then ammonia, NH3. So, nitrogen has three valence electron and these three valence electron, it uh, combines with the three hydrogen atoms to form a octet, stable. So, this was about the homework. So, we have already discussed about what is covalent bond. Today, let us discuss some of the properties of a covalent bond. So, the first one. Covalent bonded molecules have strong bonds within the molecule. So, in ionic bond, we have learned that there will be a strong bond between two molecules. Here, molecules have strong bonds within the same molecule. Then, they have small intermolecular force. And they have low melting and boiling points. So, why do they have low melting point and boiling points? Whereas, ionic bonds have high melting point and boiling point. Why? Because since they have small intermolecular force between themselves, so they have low melting and boiling point. Next properties, they do not form charged particles. Covalent compounds will don't have the charged particles why whereas ionic bonds will get the charged particles for example sodium chloride when they combine sodium becomes positively charged ion chlorine becomes negatively charged ions why they don't have charged particles because in covalent bond the electrons are shared between atoms okay here the electrons are shared whereas in ionic bond there will be a complete transfer of electrons takes place okay that is the reason that's why they do not have charged particles last properties they are generally poor conductor of electricity okay they are a bad conductor of electricity electricity why because there is no any charged particles present in the compound so, there is one more question. Why does carbon exist in large number of compounds? So, he, compounds almost, the many compounds in the earth, they consist in at least carbon atom. Why? Because the nature of the covalent bond enables carbon to form a large number of compounds. Okay, because of that property, it forms covalent bond with the any other element so all the compounds consist of carbon atom 
this is about the characteristics of a covalent bond properties of carbon which lead to huge number of carbon atoms so what are the property that made carbon to make bond with the other elements okay so mainly there are two properties two properties of carbon that made carbon to make bond with the other atoms which are those two properties let's discuss now the two characteristics seen in carbon which helps to form large number of compounds is tetravalency the next is catenation okay so because of these two property the carbon is able to form bond with the other atoms okay one is tetravalency the other one is catenation so this about the tetravalence we have already discussed right so what do you mean by tetravalency tetra means four electrons because the valency of the carbon is four so it is called a tetravalent element we have learned that the second one is catenation now what do you mean by this catenation let's see now so catenation it is the unique ability of carbon to form bonds with the other atoms of a carbon okay that is only carbon has that ability means it can form bonds with the other atoms of carbon and as a result giving rise to large molecule okay and this property is called catenation so even all individuals have unique ability your own talent right similarly this carbon also has this unique talent means ability to form bonds with other atoms of carbon either with the same carbon atom or with other atoms okay and this catenation is possessed by this carbon and silicon even silicon can also possess this property how is the catenation of silicon is different from that of carbon yes there is a difference between silicon and carbon even silicon has four valence electron okay silicon also comes in the same group 14th group uh, in the periodic table and silicon also has four valence electron but it is its catenation is uh, different why because silicon forms compounds with the hydrogen which have chain of up to seven or eight atoms for that some restriction limitations are there silicon atoms up to eight they can uh, form a bond with the hydrogen atom but these compounds are very reactive whereas the cat catenation of carbon is very strong and uh, stable so here the silicon is formed bond with the hydrogen atom in the first picture you see five silicon atoms are made bond with the hydrogen atom and the second picture you see only two silicon so this is restricted up to eight okay a maximum is a eight silicon can make a bond with the hydrogen atom but in a carbon there is no any limitations okay it can form bond with million millions of uh, atoms so why are carbon carbon bonds are very strong and stable because carbon is small in size so this enables the nucleus to hold on to the shared pair of electrons uh, strongly okay and the second property is what uh, the tetravalency right so that was about the catenation i hope that concept is understood what is catenation the next is what tetravalency since the valency of carbon is 4 it can form bonds with other carbon atom or with the atoms of other elements for example hydrogen it can also form bond with the hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and halogen group halogens are chlorine fluorine etc here is a simple example is given carbon with the the bond with the other elements other than carbon elements okay this is about the properties of a carbon compound so mainly the two properties of carbon compounds which are they 
tetravalency and catenation. Remember that and the definition of catenation. Okay. So, this is one more property of carbon. Only this carbon can form bond with other atoms either through a straight chain. Okay. Means in a single line or branched chain. In the branched chain, one carbon is substituted below the carbon atom or above the carbon atom. That is called branched chain. Okay. Not in a straight chain. And the last one is closed chain means carbon also forms a bond with the cyclic form. Okay, these are the different forms of a bond formation in a carbon atom. Okay, and this is possible only in a carbon atom. So these are the properties of a carbon element. Okay, now look at this compound. Here carbon is made bond with the hydrogen atom okay and this compound is called methane so what do we call these compounds if the carbon the compound which consists carbon and hydrogen in it what do we call those compounds this is just an example i give methane is an example generally we call them as hydrocarbons the name itself indicates hydrocarbons. These compounds consist only hydrogen and carbon. So, what are hydrocarbons? Carbon compounds which contain carbon and hydrogen only are called hydrocarbons. Okay. Now, let's see the classification of hydrocarbons. Mainly, hydrocarbons means the compound which consists carbon and hydrogen are classified into two. They are open chain compounds and closed chain compounds. Then what are open chain compounds? Just now we discussed, right? The straight chain. Straight chain. Carbon is presented in a single line. That is open chain compound. Closed chain means the carbons are a arranged in a closed form cyclic ring form that is closed chain compound okay so mainly hydrocarbons are classified into two open chain compounds and closed chain compounds under open chain compounds again there are two two types saturated hydrocarbons and unsaturated hydrocarbons saturated hydrocarbons are less reactive because they already became saturated. Means uh, in under saturated hydrocarbons, uh, there will be a single bond between each carbon atom. Okay. So just remember now, open chain compounds uh, has two types, saturated and unsaturated. Under Again, under unsaturated, there are two types of uh, compounds. That is alkene and uh, alkyne. Okay. Alkanes are example for saturated hydrocarbons. Alkene and alkynes are example for unsaturated hydrocarbons. Now we will come to closed chain compounds. Under closed chain compounds, again there are two types. Homocyclic and heterocyclic. Homo means a single phase, right? Homocyclic compounds consist only carbon and hydrogen. Okay? But heterocyclic means other than hydrogen atom carbon with other elements hydrogen is replaced by some other element they are called heterocyclic compounds clear but we, we are not studying about heterocyclic under homocyclic again there are two types aromatic and alicyclic Dear students, in this lesson, we will study only about open chain compounds that is saturated and unsaturated and under closed chain compounds, we will focus only to the homocyclic compounds. Homocyclic, under homocyclic, aromatic and alicyclic compounds, they are the two types. Okay, cleared? Okay, today let's discuss the saturated and what are saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons. So, what are saturated carbon compounds? The compounds of carbon which are linked by 
only single bonds between the carbon atoms okay only single bond is a present between carbon carbon atoms such compounds are called saturated compounds so alkanes comes under saturated compounds alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons in which the carbon atoms are connected by only single bond examples methane ethane propane you just see the last suffix that is ane it ends with the a n e alkanes are compounds are ends with a n e so what are unsaturated carbon compounds compounds of carbon having double or triple bonds between their carbon atoms are called unsaturated compounds under uh, unsaturated carbon compounds consist either double bond or triple bond okay so alkenes are alkene and alkynes are unsaturated hydrocarbons so alkenes consist double bond between any two carbon carbon atom as shown in the picture alkynes consist any one triple bond between carbon carbon atom now let's see the difference between saturated and unsaturated compounds saturated are what they are linked by only single bond between carbon atoms and unsaturated they are linked by double or triple bond between their compound atoms and they are less reactive but they are more reactive dear students will discuss in detail about the saturated and unsaturated carbon compounds in the next class okay yes thank you please take down the classification of hydrocarbon and the difference between saturated and hydrocarbon saturated and unsaturated compounds in your notes